Did you know I just got out of the Navy and I got out 90 days early, got to intern with an amazing company, and I got paid to do it. We're gonna talk about all that in today's video. All right, welcome back to the Engineer Productions channel. My name is Colin, and today I'm gonna to talk about a little well-known secret called the DOD Skill Bridge Program in the uh, Armed Forces. Now, this program has been around a while. It's nothing new, it came out in 2014. And I've seen a lot of the people make videos on it. I just wanted to make a video about my experience and then some things I encountered that I see a lot of the people don't mention. So we're gonna get into the program. What is it? Program for transitioning service members. So it doesn't matter if you did four years or 20, you're retiring or you're getting out. Uh, it lets you intern with a company that is approved by the SkillBridge program. And then you get to intern with them at the end of your internship is also uh, the end of your active service. So it's like, you're almost getting free leave, but it's not actually costing you any leave. Now, you can do this up to 180 days, that's six months early before your end of active service, but it comes down to the discretion of your commanding officer. So, you route a request, say, hey, I spoke to this company, I like them, they're on an approved uh, list, can I enter in with them? And then they say, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you get to go and turn with the company, get some skills, meet some people, um, explore this trade or industry you uh, may already know a lot about or want to get into and then at the end of it you have the opportunity to interview okay so I just completed mine I did 90 days all right that, that comes down to uh, how long they would let me go right so they only let me go three months early but you know beggars can't be choosers and uh, I had an amazing experience I did it with uh, an aerospace company out here in Florida. I'm not gonna name their name, but I had a good, positive experience with them. I learned tons of skills, met a lot of people, kind of gave me a peek into that, that civilian world and um, a very familiar aviation type industry that I was used to in the, in the Navy, but uh, without all the Navy stuff that comes with that. So I really enjoyed it. I just interviewed with them. I'm waiting on a response and I'm gonna get into some uh, questions I had that I couldn't find answers for. So how to route your request for SkillBridge, okay? So it doesn't really matter the branch you're in. I'm pretty sure we all have a very similar process. Eventually this is gonna go up to your skipper or that's what we say in the name, your commanding officer, your CO, right? And it's gonna have to go through your supervisor, right? Your E5, your E6, your senior enlisted leader, your department head, your uh, senior enlisted leader for the unit, and then the, the executive officer and the commanding officer. All right, now inside this request, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna wanna see a number of things, right? If you go to the DOD SkillBridge website, there's actually a checklist on there. I'm gonna, put that, I'm gonna put that up on the screen here. So if you look on this checklist, you can see a number of things, but nothing's too silly or too obvious. It all has to be printed out. All that supporting documentation has to be in your folder with your request kit, okay? So make sure you have that printout of your license, um, the printout of your eval showing that, you know, that you're, you're uh, a good soldier, marine, sailor, so on and so forth, right? You're showing up on time, you're doing your job, you're doing what's asked of you, all right? They're gonna want to see printouts of uh, your personnel file showing, yes, I do get out in the next 12 months or a year and a half. I, I intend to separate. They're gonna want to see your PRT scores, right? Your passing, your physical readiness test, right? Your, your meeting, meeting the benchmark. Um, they're also going to want to see the instruction that your branch has, right? For me, the NAV admin, Naval Administration, and it said how the program works, what it allows the service members to do, how many days, and I went and I printed those out. I even highlighted the little sections to make it really easy for my chain command to look at and go, oh, well, okay. Right there it says, internship agreement from the company I like, right? So I would route it, get to talk to the HR of the company I like, get that internship agreement, what have you, and then toss it in there, and then route it on up, okay? Now, what's important to remember is your time span, okay? So this lets you get out six months early, okay? So that means you're still getting out, you have to do all of your getting out things in advance. That means you probably should be routing this request 12, 15, 16 months in advance, so then when it is approved, because it might not get approved right away. You might have to route it a couple times. It might get denied. You have to fix things. You have to annotate. You might have to one-line some things or print out a whole new routing sheet. 
All right, it'll be a pain in the butt, I promise you. Then you have to do your separation paperwork, okay? That means all the paperwork for your medical file and your DD-214, your separation physical, and all those things that come with that, with, uh, with the getting out of the service. Doesn't matter what branch you're in, we all gotta do it. Talk to anybody who's gotten out, it's, it's a pain in the butt, but we gotta do it. So, you gotta remember, be prepared for those things, and then have all the contact information for HR and what have you, because you won't see a lot of your um, familiar documentation, your separation orders, that uh, discharge paperwork, until way after you're out. You're gonna wanna still have contact with your unit so you can you know, get a hold on your paperwork and track it. All right, they're gonna wanna know what address they, they need to mail it to. Now, again, you're also moving across the country, but chances are you might not be moving to your home or record this internship um, you're going to might be somewhere else. It might be closer than your home record. It might be farther than your home record. And unless you're retiring, this is a voluntary separation, then the, or the service, I should say, will only pay to, for you to go up to the distance of your home record. Now, if this, uh, this skill bridge program you found with a, an employer or company is closer, awesome. It's farther, then you're gonna have to pay the difference. Okay, so that's something to anticipate. Another thing, B-A-H, right? Nobody talked about that, right? I went to a Fleet and Family Services uh, base on uh, our naval base. Um, I would imagine Marine Corps or Army, you have something similar for dependents and active duty service members for non-unit related things. You know, you're having trouble, um, you need counseling, you need financial assistance, so on and so forth. Anyways, this office discussed uh, TAPS programs and it also discussed uh, SkillBridge. And it took, um, the gentleman who worked there to tell me, hey, your basic allowance for housing will not change. I said, what? Yeah, your basic allowance for housing will stay where you're stationed and wherever your, uh, your, your skill bridge program is, you're gonna have to figure that out. Hopefully what you're being paid here will cover that. If it doesn't, you gotta figure that out, all right? So if you're going out there on your own, maybe you're going out there with your family, your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, that's another thing to anticipate, okay? Um, they're not gonna pay for your move there, but they will pay for your move to get out, so it's kind of like a catch-22, you gotta figure that out. And you're doing this again, uh, 12 months in advance, you're routing all this paperwork, trying to get the travel advance, but here's another thing, you can't get that travel advance um, without separation orders. You can't get the separation orders So pretty much like the month you're getting out, so. These are all things to anticipate. You won't get that compensation until way farther down the line. So you gotta have your ducks in a row, you gotta have your finances in order. And it might be difficult for some younger service members who kinda did their four and they're like, hey, I wanna get out. All right, but what's important to remember too, is you gotta be in the good graces of your unit because when you go to route this paperwork, you know, they're gonna look at all other aspects of your performance in the unit if they want, even want to entertain this. Some people might even try to talk you out of it, right? Oh, don't do this, I've heard other service. We had another guy or girl who routed that and they got denied, don't even try. Try, route it, you'd be surprised, right? Not everybody at your unit or duty station is necessarily looking out for your best interest. Not to talk down on the service, but it's a very it's a very real phenomenon we've all dealt with. Some, some are there to help you be successful in and outside of it, and uh, some only want people to help further their career. So anyways, enough of that, but don't let, others, don't let others discourage you. Go ahead and route that paperwork, get denied, figure out why it got denied, reroute it, all right? And then the day comes when you start your internship. This is the exciting part, all right? Now it's, it's time to start working, all right? So whatever your industry is, you know, IT, healthcare, Maybe you're going back into aviation, security forces, what have you. It's important that you are proactive, okay? Um, there's a lot of hand-holding in the service. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say that. There's no hand-holding when you get to the company. You're not gonna get yelled at for not doing extra training or volunteering, and you're not gonna get congratulated for doing extra training or volunteering or asking questions. It's up to you to do all these things. So if you find yourself there for six months, you know, you're not being taught things or you have questions that aren't exactly answered, go out and talk to some of the new employees and figure out what some of their struggles were. Talk to different levels of management, introduce yourself, get friendly with people. If there's an opportunity to have like some team building type of work function outside of work, go to it. 
get to know these people because this is ultimately your chance to get a vibe for do I want to work here when my time is up. So that's another thing to, uh, to remember. Uh, I hope this video answered some of, uh, some of your questions. I know these are some of the questions I had, some of the things I encountered. And uh, I think this is a great program for anyone who's uh, getting out or retiring. Um, why not take advantage of it, right? They made it for us. So like if you, uh, you like this content, comment below. Let me know what you think. Catch you in the next video. Yeah.